I mean, I think years ago, I had studied a number of different um, philosophies and psychologies and spiritualities and theologies, and, and I think I had the same feeling that a lot of people have. It's like, enough with the theologies. We don't really need another theology. You know, we, we are open to an experience, not to a theology. We don't need to get into comparative theology or comparing and contrasting things. I mean, the ego will even take the so-called versions of the Course, you know, they say, oh, what about the Hertex and you and Casey and then the published Course, and then we have the, the errata that came, you know, some corrections to the first edition, and it's like, oh my, it's almost like Christianity, here we go. <laughs> comparing, contrasting, you know, the Dead Sea Scrolls with uh, we got the Gospel of Thomas, you know, and it sounds more like paleontology or something. Uh, you know, it's like we're here to have an experience. And the Course doesn't say that, that, that a theology will come to end your doubting. In the clarification of terms, Jesus says, an experience will come to end your doubting. That it also says back there that, you know, a universal theology is impossible. But, you know, a universal experience is, is inevitable. Because light and love and joy, that's an experience, it's not a concept, it's not a theology. There is one concept that's helpful, and that's forgiveness. It's still a concept. In heaven there are no concepts. So in heaven there's no thought of forgiveness, because there's nothing to forgive, you know. I remember the first time I read that in the Course, God does not forgive, for He has never condemned. There must be condemnation first before forgiveness is necessary. How beautiful to read a book that tells you God does not forgive. How wonderful. It's, talk about going beyond theologies. There's, one of his pamphlets where Jesus says uh, uh, that belief in God is unnecessary, for God can be but known. Belief in God is unnecessary. You know, you start to look at some of these ideas, they're so spectacular. Belief in God is unnecessary, for God can be but known. God does not forgive, for He has never condemned. Don't usually hear these from the pulpit. <laughs> I came a couple years ago to Canada, to Edmonton, to a, I believe it was a religious science church, it was a New Thought church, and I think before I came they were doing a, a like a 10 day uh, or 10 week um, study of the Buddha. I love that, you know, you come to a, a church that's doing a, a study of the Buddha, it seems pretty progressive, open-minded. The Christian Church doing a, a, a discourse on the Buddha. I went there, I had some people traveling with me that are very deep, very devoted, um, very much open to living the presence of this, and uh, they wanted me to speak at the, at the service, so I spoke at the service, and I put a group of chairs up here, and we I had the people who were traveling with me, we just sat up there, we took microphones, and uh, I remember launching into the discussion that day up there in Edmonton, and um, I probably was only 15 minutes into the discussion, and a lady in the front row raised her hand, and she said, you have nothing good to say about the ego. <laughs> you have, I mean, I just sitting here for 15 minutes, and then I heard one positive thing come out of your mouth about the ego. What's going on here? So, it's always the Holy Spirit moment. Take the glass, take a little sip, water, see what comes out. <laughs> so, I took a little sip like that, and I looked her in the eye, she's sitting in front of her. I said, The ego wants you dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a death wish. Uh, you can't, you know, Jesus says you can't paint rosy red lips on a skeleton. Uh, there's no way to dress up a death wish. Uh, you know, people 
talk about the power of positive thinking and if God is love and God loves everything and God loves the ego and all this stuff. But please, <laughs> let's let's talk from the heart. Let's, let's really get to the core of the matter. It's the belief in separation from God. It's the, it's the attempt, not it's not a reality, but it's, it's the attempt to deny love. It's the attempt to say that there's something more than love. It's really what it is. You know, that's what the belief is. There's something more than everything. It sounds kind of absurd. And it is more than everything. What if there could be more than everything? That's how absurd it is. But it's a death wish. Freud called it Thanatos. You know, it's a death wish. So, anyway, I just let her rip that day up in Edmonton and uh, a few people walked out of the church. Uh, and uh, basically I was teaching that it's an experience, you don't need intermediaries, you don't need churches, you don't need theologies. I had a great time. I was there for three or four hours just in glee and joy letting it rip. And I, I just had a smile and I said, well, the truth is really not popular uh, in this world. The ego made up this world, the ego made up the churches <laughs> and all the theologies and when you let the small, still voice just beam and shine. Uh, I'm really not into numbers. You know, when people say, well, I don't know if we have enough people there to show up to support your, uh, your talk of it. I'm really not into numbers. Um, when you live on divine providence, uh, you just, you stay in the joy of the moment and you don't have a debit or a credit or you don't have concerns because everything is, is in the divine order. It's always perfect. You know, as Jesus says, you cannot help but be at the right place at the right time. You cannot but be at the right place at the right time. And there are no accidents in this world. So, the present moment and the presence of God really doesn't have anything to do with numbers or quantitative things. It's a purely qualitative experience. And it's just like you could, you could feel totally connected to God regardless of where the body seems to be, whether you have one person with you or a thousand or a million. And the same, you could be out walking in nature feeling totally union with God. That loneliness has nothing to do with bodies, um, emptiness has nothing to do with bodies, and, and union with God has nothing to do with bodies. It's purely a state of mind. Just like Jesus says, sickness, all illness is mental illness. You know, he means it. It's just, illness is just a, an egoic illusion. It's just a mental distortion, that's all it is. Actually, illness has nothing to do with the body. It takes a lot of mind training to start to come to that awareness that illness has nothing to do with the body. That death has nothing to do with the body. Again, all questions about the world and form imply that, that the death has something to do with the form. But we have to come back to the death wish. Everything is mind. In fact, if you keep working with the Course in Miracles or any authentic spiritual journey, you will find that all is mind. That there is nothing but mind. There is no such thing as manifestation. Mm -hmm. There is no manifestation because all is mine. Mm -hmm. Basically, uh, Jesus will call the ego wishful thinking in the sense that it's a wish to be separate from God. Is really what the belief is. It's just a wish to be separate. And you might say that forgiveness is a wish to be healed. Sounds like Merlin. Okay, give me my wand. I don't want that death wish anymore. I'll have a healing wish. <laughs> I get my pixie dust out and, and like in Peter Pan, I'd rather have a healing wish. And really that's what forgiveness is. It's a healing wish. And, and the ego is a death wish. And really the question always comes down to, what do you want?